Hey, Rabonzo here. My guest for this episode is David Andrew Weeb. We talk about his approach to providing education for the entrepreneurial musician, what musicians should focus on, and staying creative. Let's do it. This is the Unstarving Musicians Podcast. I'm your host, Rabonzo. This podcast features conversations with me and indie music artists. Conversations intended to help other indie musicians be better at marketing, business, the creative process, and all the other things that empower us to do more of what we love. Make music. Welcome to another episode. Thank you for tuning in, as the expression goes. It's not really tuning in. It's not radio, is it? But uh, yeah, thanks for downloading, I guess. By the way, subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever the heck you get your favorite podcasts to, I don't know, help me spread the word about the Unstarving Musician podcast, because your subscribing does that. Plus, you know, you get notified of the latest episodes right there in your little podcatcher player app thing. (laughs) So, man, I am excited about some gigs I got coming up in the new year. I have an opportunity rolling around the corner to play with Rockin' Johnny Bergen, who's been featured on this podcast. You should check out my conversation with him. Just go to unstarvingmusician.com and search for Rock and Johnny Bergen. You will find that episode. And I'm excited to have hooked up with some local expats from uh, Canada and Germany, actually. Some great musicians um, that I've played with a little bit before. And uh, yeah, interested. We're going to explore a trio. I'm pretty confident we're going to do some, uh, some gigs in the new year. Maybe before that rolls around. And I'm finally meeting some great um, local Panamanian artists who are musicians, songwriters, singers, super talented. It took me a little while to meet some that are local to me. There's tons of them here. I just, uh, I don't get into the urban environment of Panama City enough to have known too many of them yet. But uh, yeah, this is all good stuff. Who knows? Maybe I'll be playing with some of those local guys too. That would be, that would be incredible. So David, Andrew Weed, my guest for this episode, like most Music educators started out as an indie musician like you and I, like many entrepreneurs that I like to call music business educators. He's found a way to grow his music career and the business of his music through a project he calls Music Entrepreneur HQ. The website and podcast dedicated to this project provide resources and information for independent musicians. His goal is to help us with booking better shows, music sales and streaming, digital marketing, licensing, placement, and making a better income. That's a good one. I like that a lot. Speaking of things that will help you with many of the things that David's trying to help us with, have you checked out Banzoogle yet? I'm constantly railing about it here on the podcast. Not railing, but I'm constantly advocating it. I'm hoping that you have checked it out. Okay, here's the deal. Here's why I like it. I've just kind of scraped the surface of it myself. I'll be honest with you. I got so much stuff I'm trying to juggle. I mean, I am getting some help, so be happy for me, but I'm juggling so much stuff. It's just taken me a while to get to my own artist website, which has been untangled or slowly being untangled from unstarvingmusician.com. But uh, what I've seen is really cool. The templates are vast for musicians and they've got great street cred. They have tons of musician clients, users, subscribers, whatever we call it in this world of website content management systems that are specialized for musicians. They even have Grammy winners that use it. It's an easy to use system. That's what I've experienced. And they have tons of mobile friendly templates. They have a lot of great features to help you sell merch, grow your email list, integrate your socials. And best of all, I think, or most important of all, I think is they have support from a musician friendly team seven days a week. That is huge. That's huge to me. So here's what you do. Go to Banzoogle.com to start a 30-day free trial and use the promo code ROBONZO, R-O-B-O-N-Z-O, to get 15% off your first year. All right, I'm going to say that one more time. Banzoogle.com, promo code ROBONZO, R-O-B-O-N-Z-O. You'll be helping yourself. You'll be helping this podcast. You'll be throwing some love at Banzoogle.com. And listen, plans start at just $8.29 a month, which includes hosting and your own free custom domain name. So yeah, go check out that free trial and use the promo code Robonzo. I think that you're going to like it. And you know what? I want to hear what you think of it when you do check it out, if or when you check it out. And another thing when it comes to learning a better way to navigate your 
career as an independent musician, or maybe it's not your career, but you just want to make more music. That's what the podcast is all about. And that is what the Unstarving Musician community is all about. You can get tips from independent musicians like me and like the hundreds that I have spoken to for the podcast as research for my book, The Unstarving Musician's Guide to Getting Paid Gigs, and just the many that I've worked with about this whole journey that is making music. Just go to unstarvingmusician.com to join right there on the homepage. It's totally free, and here's what will happen when you join. You'll get an occasional email from me. I'll let you know about the latest podcast episodes and a couple of points of interest, or hopefully points of interest about the episodes, but I'm also going to share lessons, tips, advice, mistakes, mistakes, thoughts (laughs) thoughts <laughs> from myself, my many years as a gigging, gigging musician, and it's hard to talk on a Saturday morning as I record this, and also from the vast amounts of knowledge that uh, all of my guests and all of my musician friends and people that have helped me out with this entire project throw at me when I ask them questions, kind of like the ones that you hear on this podcast, or they just tell me about stuff that they struggle about. Sometimes they ask me for help, but Yeah, I share all that stuff with you little by little, and I want you to take advantage of it. So join the community. It's all free. You'll be helping the podcast in the process and the Unstarving Musician project in the process. My goal is to help you make more music to make your journey a little easier. So do it. (laughs) I'd love to have you in the community. So David and I, back to David, We talk about a lot of the things he's doing in the world of educating other musician entrepreneurs and how he weaves his own music into the picture to keep his own creative outlet going. We touch on his personal experience with mastermind groups and talk about why those can be, are an important resource available to musicians and any entrepreneur. Personal development programs, because he's in one, he's been in one that's helping him a lot and a whole lot more. I've enjoyed speaking with David on more than one occasion, and I think you should check him out. Just go to musicentrepreneurhq.com to learn more about his work. Okay, here is me and David Andrew Weeb. Okay, I noticed today that you have an interest in mastermind groups, and it's a topic near and dear to me, and I think it's something we should share with listeners. I just wanted to get your perspective on why you find them important and if that applies kind of across the board or maybe even specifically about how it can be a great thing for musicians. Earlier this year, I set the intention to get into a mastermind. In fact, to start a mastermind. So I've been holding that intention this whole time. And as I got into this personal development program that lasted for four months early in the year, I made it my goal to try to figure out if I could start this whole thing. And so there was one person that had already signed up and was interested. And he's like, yeah, let's do it. Could you contact people on your end? I'll contact people on my end. We'll see who we can find. And it was taking months. We weren't quite nailing it as far as I think you need at least three people to make a real go of this whole mastermind thing. Too many people, overwhelming. Too few people, you're just not going to get the same value out of it. And finally, you know, we found a third person, but he, I guess, approached Brent first, uh, Brent Varstra from, from, I want to say, Learn Jazz Standards. And he's like, I'm interested in doing a, a mastermind with you. And then Brent contacted me and said, you know, this guy, Greg, from Musician Monster is interested in starting a mastermind. So I was the first to be invited, of course, by Brent, and it came together. So I I held that intention, I made some stuff happen, and there we were, you know, we were in a mastermind. And it just, I can't tell you, but it just happened to like be perfect, perfect synergy between each of us and where we were in our businesses and what our struggles were and what we needed to know and what we need to learn to each other, even like complementary services that we were offering to each other. So I, I think, you know, those would be some of the benefits of joining a, a mastermind. And I can't tell you how much I've learned just in that time. I knew that I was stuck in my own insanity in my business, that it was not moving forward, that I'd reached sort of a logical limit of what I could personally do to grow it. And I needed some outside help. And we all know that like coaching can be super expensive. It's wonderful. It's really, really useful. 
but it can be a little harsh on the pocketbook when you're trying already have a business and you have expenses and you're trying to move things forward. So having this mastermind has been absolutely invaluable and I can't say enough about the power of it. I think for musicians, it's going to be similar, right? If you get together with a group of artists that are all in a different market, it doesn't have to be, you can be in the same genre if you want, but get together with a group of artists that are all in a different market, you're going to get a different perspective on like the types of gigs that they're playing, how they're making money, how much they're getting for in terms of music sales, which streaming platforms are actually bigger for them versus which ones are bigger for you. And that broader perspective can really only help you. That's great. I love how, I don't know if it was by design or it just was good fortune the way it happened. It sounds like it was at least partly in by design, but that is that you... You kind of niched it down an extra step for me because I've had some experience in still participating in a mastermind that was really for started as personal brand entrepreneurs. And then it has come down to personal brand entrepreneurs who have some overlap in some of the things that they're trying to accomplish. But it sounds like what you did was you went and found three people. And I suppose there's benefits to both, right? But you found three people very niched into similar spaces in that you're in Uh, music and that must be great and as you pose the thought about musicians who are really just working on the business of their music and not necessarily educating other musicians it is an interesting question or thought that could be the same genre or markets rather or it could be different and maybe different markets in that scenario is not as different as the what i first gave you where you have just the broad somewhat of a broad net of personal brand entrepreneurs yes yeah, I mean, there could be a little bit of a, a difference there, but I think, you know, musicians could sort of figure out their own way of, of handling that in the sense that, hey, let's get together at such and such a bar where we all want a gig, have a conversation, see if we can get in touch with the booking person at the bar, and then we can all move our careers forward while we're moving our careers forward. And so the one guy is a, a jazz musician you mentioned, and you know what? I think I was, it's quite possible. I know Greg will not as well, which you may know from our last conversation. Of course. Yeah. And I think I was thinking of Greg when I was thinking of you. Oh yeah. David's doing these online collaborative deals with other musicians, which he really doesn't, I'm remembering again, you know, and I'm not sure if I have it straight, but I'm remembering, oh yeah. And David, he's not real into marketing that he just get, he does some collaboration. He's making some income from it and he's filling maybe more than anything, filling the uh, need to be creative on his instrument, which in Greg's case is drums, if I remember right. Is that Greg I was thinking of, not you? (laughs) (laughs) Actually, that's a fair point because, I mean, I do have many projects and and people know that about me, but one of the things that, that I do, yeah, is I just release a little bit of music on the side to keep those creative juices flowing. I am not necessarily counting on that to make me a ton of money or to make me hugely popular or anything like that. But it can definitely be sort of the experiment, the proving ground of some of my tactics and strategies and and, and marketing work that I do and to see what works and what doesn't work. So, I mean, I get to experiment endlessly with this stuff and I don't care if I fail or or succeed because I'm not invested in that side of things, uh, making huge amounts uh, of money for me. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Greg does some similar stuff to that. Yeah, and I, th- I think it was, Greg. So tell me, I want to know a little bit about what you do to fulfill your musically creative side and what you were just talking about. Can you tell me some specifics? Like, because I don't remember what's your, you know, what's your primary instrument or instruments and do you write music? Do you do what you do musically in collaborative formats or do you do a lot of things on your own? Yes. <laughs> I sing and play guitar and bass and then i'll also like you know program drums and synth and stuff like that so i'm fully capable of putting together some some reasonably good solo projects which i've done i released two eps this year one was actually recorded last year and that's like the highest quality production ep that i have ever done and there was proper session musicians and proper production and we recorded the drums in the studio and we kind of you know we did all the right things because there was a little bit of a funding behind it and, and that was the no escape ep which i released ended up releasing in june this year i could have released it sooner but things got kind of crazy this year 
And uh, then I released a second EP. So before leaving Calgary and moving to Abbotsford, I noticed I had, you know, six songs just sitting on my hard drive. And if I added a few little things here and there, even though the vocals are basically rough takes and some of the things aren't like playing nice with each other i just thought like well, why don't i just record a few guitar solos program some percussion for one of the tracks and then just put it out there because i've done this before there was a release called fire your god which uh, you know on spotify shows the 2018 release but originally it was 2011 and it was called something else it was called demos 2010 and i just thought you know it's kind of a shame that that release is not available commercially so i decided to rebrand it slightly and put it out there and it just so happened that a guest i had on my podcast amin abdullah from sound whale said to me you know i went and listened to your music and it's reminding me of john for and he's like have you ever listened to this album by him and i was like no i haven't and he said well it's similar you might be surprised like a lot of his releases are kind of rough around the edges, rough takes, not full on production. And then when I went to listen to it and I said, yeah, you're right. So then that inspired the release of that second DP this year. But yeah, I've played in bands. I've been a session musician, like, you know, in Calgary anyway. I was called upon regularly for live shows as well as recording in the studio. Did some great work with Jonathan Ferguson and, and Long John Lev. And I've probably done it all at this point, but I love songwriting, love making music. So, so my solo releases are, again, kind of the chance for me to experiment and have a creative outlet. Well, that's cool. And I wanted to talk about it because I target, as you know, the, the unstarving musician to, to indie artists. And, you know, quite possibly I'm getting on occasion other educators who are listening to people like yourself and maybe some of the musicians too, to get in their heads a little bit. But, uh, so in my mind, you, you started out as a, an independent musician, or maybe, you know, you started out in cover bands and you, then you become a songwriter. So in either case, you're an independent musician. And then one day you have this epiphany to do something to help other musicians, which leads you to the music entrepreneur HQ (laughs) project and the podcast. What, um, I guess, you know, what I'd like to get out of that whole thing is if you had a, a, an artist come to you and is maybe thinking something similar and they haven't quite taken the steps that you have or just for any reason wanted to extol the virtues of the path that you're on now where you're still entertaining your own creative outlets by doing some music on your own time and then you are doing this thing that you want to be broader scale where you're helping other musicians how would you talk about that and how it could be a great thing for other independent artists well that's a really great question i think that there is a bit of a calling in other words like many of us that end up wanting to help musicians start out as struggling musicians for whatever reason right it could be a mindset thing could be monetary thing it could be any challenge you've experienced along the way and that actually ends up being the perfect reason for people like us to go and help artists because we've gone through the thick of it we've been through all of it you know you want to talk about your challenges uh, i've probably been there and so being able to talk to someone that you can relate to is such a huge thing and then have them listen from the outside and not just be like emotionally involved in your challenges because we all get really emotionally wrapped up in that have someone sitting on the outside that isn't emotionally involved in your challenges and be able to speak objectively as far as what your next steps might be what you could do to handle it or in some cases ignoring the problem is the best thing because you're too fixated on it and all you need to do is just kind of move forward with whatever your passion for that whole thing is so for musicians who want to help musicians i'm going to say this is not like a huge leap it's difficult to make a lot of money in this niche right it's not impossible you can make your books you can make your courses You can maybe even partner with somebody to go and make an app or software service and do really well at that. I don't think that's the reason to get into it necessarily. I think for the average musician, maybe starting a blog, right? Or just one content channel and then sharing your journey 
and then just being like, this is what I've gone through. And here's one way that you can go about solving your problems because there's no one way, right? There's many ways, but here's how I solved this problem. Here's how I went out about it. Here's how I thought about it and approached it. And offering that type of advice, advice can be very useful. And I look at someone like Matt Starr, who I had on the podcast. And at this point, he's playing with some of the big rock bands or rock acts that have survived the 70s and 80s and, and so forth. And uh, it's really cool to watch. But, uh, you know, he also presents himself as a coach. He says, you know, I'm, I, I do drums and I'll offer to drum on your album for X amount of dollars. But uh, I also offer coaching to musicians who want to do what I did. I was staring 40 down the barrel and uh, uh, knew I didn't have much time left and I had to figure it out. And so that kind of thing can be super, super helpful. So is it fair to say that this is as much a creative outlet for you as it is anything else such as a new business or just a drive desire to give back? There is definitely a drive and a desire to give back. And the other part of it is that oftentimes I've tried to, you know, set myself up in a certain way or, or look a certain way from the outside looking in. And I've just realized recently I, I, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I don't care if people want to call me a freelancer or an entrepreneur. I don't care if they see that I'm good or bad or, you know, they don't think I, I've got what it takes or whatever. I just know what I've done and what I've accomplished. And that's what I'm sharing from is my perspective as well as the things that that I've done. So I have a lot of fun doing it. And and to me, yeah, this is this is serious. Like this is a business. But I can also say that I've spent a lot of time creating things that I wanted to create in, instead of investing a ton of money and effort and energy and resources into either marketing it or just kind of setting up the whole the landing page and funnel and copywriting and getting the title right and making sure that the color of the button is something people will actually <laughs> click on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And you can go down that rabbit trail. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're listening to this right now going like, I love to obsess over conversion rate optimization. Awesome. I need people like you <laughs> to help me with my business. But yeah, it's been a bit of both. I focused on creating things that I want wanted to create and didn't necessarily want to depend or rely on them fully for my financial needs. But I also intend to create this and make this into something that is very profitable, very impactful and helpful for people out there. Very cool. And speaking of content channels, do you have any strong feelings about, well, I know you do for yourself, I would assume you do, but <laughs> do you have any strong feelings about musicians doing podcasts? Yeah, that is such a great question. And for years, I feel like it's been an untapped channel for many musicians. And the barriers to entry are lesser than they ever were before. So when I was first getting started in podcast, it was like, depending on what platform you were using, I was using movable type at the time, which is a content management system, just like WordPress. But you had to make, you know, these custom post types and insert code into certain parts of your page and, and create a brand new, what was it, RSS feed for your, for your podcast. Like it wasn't hard for me, but it wasn't the easiest either. And those barriers to entry are like almost gone, right? And I still recommend people set up their own website where they host all their content, except for the audio, which needs to be hosted externally because that just takes up too much bandwidth on your server. It's gotten so much easier to do that uh, in some cases not doing it, especially if you are great at speaking but not typing, <laughs> which as we know, there's experts in this space that admit I don't like writing anything and I'm not good at it. I just jump on a video or I jump on a microphone and a podcast episode and, and I talk about the things that I want to talk about instead of trying to like thoroughly think them through and then type them up. It's just like you can get your transcriptions done up later. So I think number one is musicians should certainly take advantage of other people's podcasts and get invited on as a guest whenever and wherever possible to share about, you know, their successes or their new releases or their upcoming tours. And not to say that I would absolutely want every single musician on my podcast. So, so beware, <laughs> but uh, I can be a little more picky in my selection process, but I think musicians should absolutely utilize it. And two, 
if audio is your domain, like you feel you have a good radio voice or you feel you can express your thoughts better in audio form than in text form, then absolutely podcasts are great. It's not for everyone, but I think it can be a great channel for certain personalities. Yeah, I agree. And uh, you may have to do something similar. You made me think of Greg Wilna when I had the pleasure of speaking to him for his podcast. Uh, he drives his uh, guest prospects to a page, which you may do the same thing, and um, kind of gives them the rundown, I guess, on a little bit what expectations and what he's hoping for, including what he's hoping for if he's going to um, entertain an inter interview with you. And I was like, wow, that's, I got to do something like this. To, I finally, uh, it's sitting as on a draft page on one of my two podcasts right now, which, so I need to finish it up. But it's basically for me, just a way to not be overwhelmed by requests for people who want to be on the podcast. And it's not just those requests that are overwhelming you per se, it's just staying on top of everything and responding to people in a timely manner so they don't think I'm ignoring them, which most of us tend to think when, or quick to think if someone doesn't get back to us. So that was cool. A great screening way. Do you do something like that yourself? Well, usually what happens is I will invite the people that I really, really, really want on my podcast. And that is not necessarily a long list of people. And and so some of those people have been on my show, such as Bob Baker or James Schramko, who's not in the music industry, but is nevertheless, you know, the secret weapon for many people's businesses. And I've received some coaching from him as well. And then there's also been many, many others who came through some of my trusted PR contacts. I've had this kind of, you know, loose partnership with rock, paper, scissors for a couple of years now, and they will always send me new stories. And I'd love to say that I read them thoroughly and always look at every single one and try to help them get more coverage for their stories because, I mean, ultimately that's what they're looking for. There's no defined reward in it for me, so I don't always do that. But I will at least look things over and say, mm, do I want them on my show? That sounds interesting. Or I haven't covered that topic yet. Or that's like revolutionary or innovative. So I must have them on my show. And that's usually how a lot of the guests coming through. Because I think, as you know, like programming this full time is such a tricky and difficult task. And there's no guarantee that the people that you want on your show are actually going to come on or the schedules are going to match up and they're going to be able to come on your show when you want them to or need them to. And so it's good to be like open to different possibilities. But yeah, it, it's so handy to have that relationship with a PR company who is constantly pushing their their news and, and to kind of pick and choose or cherry pick the ones that that are interesting to you. Yeah, that's a great tip. <laughs> and then on the educational front for your, you know, your musician audience, what are the either topics or products that you're most excited about or perhaps most curious about now that uh, have already found their way into the Music Entrepreneur HQ ecosystem or, or are there? So what are you having the most fun or just curiosity about now? Well, I, I've obsessed about this thing over content distribution for several years now. Content, let's say content marketing, distribution, and syndication. And so just like finding as many outlets as I could possibly find, whether it was social networks or PDF sites or even just like file storage sites, where can I put my stuff? so that it's get seen by even just one person on, on every platform. So that continues to fascinate and interest me. I think less and less in terms of SEO value because Google's constantly changing things. And as we know, like you can go and post your stuff to some low quality article or press release sites and, and Google will actually derank you or, you know, just ignore whatever backlinks are coming from these low quality sites now. So in, in, in that sense, it stopped working. But what is still working is you can still get traffic from these various sites that are out there. And, you know, as Dan Kennedy says in, in some of his books, every author can create press and media and noise about themselves and they should do it. 
not rely on others to try to create some kind of, you know, buzz for you. You can go out and self manufacture it. And it's, it's very true. So I've certainly been obsessed with that, but we don't have any products directly related to that right now. And it's such a constantly changing and evolving space that may not even be worthwhile for me to, to create anything like that. But uh, the, the offerings at Music Entrepreneur HQ are fairly wide and varied. So in terms of the books, I now have four and I'm working on a fifth one, which will also be kind of a part of a bigger package or bundle later on. But the first is the new music industry. So this ended up being kind of a <laughs> 60,000 word tome. But in the space of, of music marketing or, or music entrepreneurship, I've noticed that people tend to have longer books. So some of you aren't going to read the whole thing, but those who do get through this whole darn thing, I think you're going to get a lot of value. And I've, I've received as, as much in terms of feedback and comments from people. And then I started releasing some shorter guides on more specific topics. And one of them is the Essential Guide to Music Entrepreneurship, which is pretty well as it sounds. It's just if you're confused about this whole thing or how it's supposed to work or what music entrepreneurship is, I've just noticed that there's so much confusion in the space and, and an overwhelming amount of information that people don't need to sift through to get an understanding of how they might set themselves up as a business. I think this is a good resource. I came out then with the Essential Guide to Creative Entrepreneurship, which is a little broader, but it totally applies to musicians too. It's more tactical. The Essential Guide to Music Entrepreneurship was a little more mindset, how to think, how to conduct yourself, where the essential guide to creative entrepreneurship was way more like strategy and tactics in terms of how you can actually go about uh, getting your audience. And then the fourth book that I launched earlier this year was Start Your Year the Right Way. And this was simply a, a motivational New Year sort of book. You know, get yourself clear on your goals and just get rid of uh, any baggage you might have about the year past, which is so important moving forward. Oftentimes we just carry whatever baggage was there uh, into the new year and, and it ends up not working out too well for us. So I think anybody who knows Michael Hyatt will know this book was certainly inspired in some ways by his work as well. I think his book is called Best Year Ever, but... That's uh, kind of where I took some inspiration from. And then I'm working on the Music Entrepreneur Code right now. And I think it's really important that because it is Music Entrepreneur HQ that I remain somewhat on brand <laughs> with what I'm doing. And it needs a subtitle and I haven't figured out what that's going to be yet because this is actually going to be like a very, probably the strongest sale proposition I've ever put together. But like I said earlier, I just noticed that as we all know, Robonzo, the straightest or the shortest distance between any two points is a direct line, right? We all learned that in school. And yet it seems to me that a lot of uh, resources that are available for music entrepreneurs is so vast and confusing and walls of text and these mind maps, there's just overwhelming amount of uh, information. And, and this is going to cut through that. I think there needs to be a resource that's more fun and easy to consume and it's direct and it's high impact and high value. And that's what I'm looking to create with the Music Entrepreneur Code. And we've got a couple other offers, whether it's affiliate products or actually some ebook and audio resources on the website as well. Yeah, I think it's it's easy for musicians and anyone who's trying to create some new business or new leg of a business. It's easy to lose sight of the fact that staying really focused on parts of it at a time or this one thing for an extended period, the benefits that can come from it, particularly looking at it as a long game, you know, kind of like you mentioned at the top of our conversation. Well, and I'm, you weren't mentioning it really to necessarily say, talk about the long game, but you were just talking about the different things you can do creatively and you may not make a lot of money on it, but there's this thing about building up all the content as you're doing. Congratulations on being on the precipice of a fifth book <laughs> and uh, all that stuff really begins to add up and creates a snowball that is our music business or our coaching business or whatever it may be. So that sounds like it's going to be a great book to look at, you know, these different things and uh, perhaps, you know, give a, a nice picture of how, um, as you really just done talking about different facets of your business. Um, it, uh, 
there's a lot of things you could try and do all at once, but kind of getting focused on some stuff makes a, a big difference, which brings me to something else I wanted to ask you. Do you, as someone who's, you know, doing mentoring work for musicians and putting out content for them, is there anything that musicians should focus on, independent musicians that maybe they commonly lose sight of or forget, or maybe just something that has as of late been something that uh, you think warrants some special attention to? Oh my gosh. Really number one is making her music. I know it, it seems crazy that we would forget the most important aspect of this whole thing, which was the thing that you felt when you, when you played that note on the guitar, or when you went and performed in front of an audience for the first time, or when you were, wrote your first lyric, that feeling of just excitement and joy and transcendence that you originally felt is why you're doing this. And musicians are losing sight of that. And unfortunately, we're getting so fixated on streaming platforms and Spotify. It's like, it's not worthy of your attention. I'm sorry to say. I would love to say that, you know, getting on playlists, that's the holy grail. You should do it. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. Go and do it. But don't get fixated on it. There isn't a lot of money in, in streaming. There isn't a lot of uh, attention and possible opportunity for much bigger opportunities in, in streaming right now. There's some things that can come through, you know, but oftentimes that's just like the, the, the minority that that happens for. So, you know, distribute your music, get it out there, share it with your fans, grow your following, do all that. Just don't get too fixated on that. <laughs> Make music, like write really great songs and continue to, to grow as a recording artist or a live performer or a session musician or whatever it is you're pursuing, continue to grow in that aspect and, and doing that and then collaborating and networking with others, you know, that can be an easily forgotten component too, but meeting people, right. And, and connecting with them and, and doing that is going to be of way more value to you than spending your whole day just sitting there trying to contact Spotify curators or playlist creators or whatever. That's my two cents. And what are your number one tips for helping artists make music, which involves obviously staying creative? I, I ask because I talk to a lot of great artists on this podcast and one's coming to mind that just gigs relentlessly, who has a manager who's really helping out a lot, which is great. But I just noticed that in this case, she's struggling to to write new music and there are probably these sort of periods that a lot of them go through I catch them at that time or it's a perpetual thing for some people what are your best tips for musicians in terms of helping themselves do the things that they know they need to do <laughs> to stay creative it's tricky uh, it, and it's tricky for me too uh, I just started a new routine this week and I get up at 7.30 and I spend 90 minutes on communication. Like that, that was unthinkable for me earlier this year. Uh, I will admit that I was often cold or dismissive in my communication and I take full responsibility for it. It's just how things were. I, I thought, it, you know, I was protecting my precious time, you know, when in reality it would have taken me all of a couple days to get back to all these people whose messages have been, some of them have been sitting there for months, probably since like May or April, you know, as I was going through that, uh, that personal development program. So having a strong routine is going to play such an important role in that. And whenever you feel that pang in your heart or your stomach or in your gut, you know, solar plexus, whenever you feel that thing, you know exactly what I'm talking about right now. If you're listening to this, go and do that thing. Yep, first thing in the morning, go and do that thing because that's what you're putting off. And you know what? You got to lean into it. And every time you feel that pang, that's perfect. That's exactly the thing. The universe is telling you. It's giving you guidance. It's saying, you know that thing that you've been thinking about endlessly, the thing that keeps you up at night, the thing that doesn't allow you to sleep soundly at night? Yeah, go and do it now. <laughs> immediately as, as soon as possible and honestly that could be anything it doesn't have to be something you've been putting off in terms of music marketing it could literally be like i need to have this conversation with my girlfriend i just i haven't been fully authentic with her there's something i'm not saying that i really need to say to her yeah go and do that text her if you have to call her if possible yeah those are the things that that often 
you're not doing and you're missing. And when you get those things out of the way, it's like you're kind of free to enjoy the day as you go through your work and your to-do list and your tasks and, and everything else. So, I mean, that was for very important discovery for myself and my threshold and tolerance for that still isn't like super high, but at least I'm doing a couple of those things daily where it's like, yeah, that's been on my mind to do, or it's been in, in the back of my mind just sitting there and I feel that pang and I need to do something about it. And so if musicians go and, and do those things, cause that's personal, right? That's a personalized approach to getting your career and moving things forward. The thing that that's holding you back more often than not is that very thing. When you feel that your heart pumping fast, that adrenaline, again, that's just the universe showing you, giving you the energy, right? Giving you the strength to go and do it. So you need that adrenaline to go and do it. And <laughs> the universe has given it to you. So, so just follow that. Yeah, that's great. I just, uh, this week, a couple nights ago was, uh, I, I don't have chronic insomnia far from it. I sleep generally pretty good and I'm a big advocate of getting a lot of rest. Um, I had insomnia because something was just bugging the heck out of me all day, well, all night. <laughs> it wasn't something I could get up and deal with or something I could necessarily deal with first thing in the morning because it involved more than just myself. But what I did do, finally, and I don't always do this if I have uh, can't sleep, but I'm like, I'm going to get up and work on some stuff that is probably underneath this making it worse, you know. So I did that, and it, you're right, it... Um, I didn't get much sleep, but I got some really good work done and I did get a nap. It was just yesterday I was trying to catch up, got a nap and I slept really well last night. So <laughs> it works. So can you talk a little bit more about communication that you were remiss or, or neglecting, whatever the words were? Like I gathered that a lot of that was messaging. Maybe some of it was sitting in your email inbox, but can you talk about that a little bit more? Like, I don't know, just share a little bit of detail. Yeah, happy to. You're right. A lot of it was in my email inbox and, and some of it was in the social media communication as well. And that was starting to drive me nuts. Just the fact that people couldn't, wouldn't hear from me in email and suddenly there would be a message on Facebook or LinkedIn. And I'm like, I don't want to jump around to 20 platforms. <laughs> There's a reason why I have an organization system for, for my communication. You know, why are you, why are you contacting me from so many different places? So that, that was it. You know, that was one of the things was like, I'm just kind of blaming others for, for my own negligence and in, in keeping up with, with some of these conversations as we all do. I was getting into some resources. One of them was like a Dan Kennedy book and it was time management for entrepreneurs. It's a great resource and I do recommend people check it out if they're curious. One of the things that Dan says and does is that he will only take faxes. He doesn't allow people to contact him any other way unless you're a close personal friend of Dan then you might have his phone number but even if you have his phone number he's very rigorous with this he'll just say okay what's up I got seven minutes and literally seven minutes is what he'll give you you know that's it. So, you know, I'm not operating at the level Dan is if I'm being perfectly 100% honest with myself. And if I'm not getting work done on my book, it's not anybody else's fault. It's my responsibility because I have that pang and I'm not doing anything about it. And, you know, there were requests for sponsored posts or like product reviews. That's such an amazing opportunity that somebody would even want to send me their product to have me try it out and then review it on my blog. And here I am like blaming them for following up with me and seeing when this review was going to be done. So, <laughs> you know, those are a few examples of, of what was happening, but it, it feels so much better to have this 90 minutes that I've set aside per day for communication. It really, I don't know, it really clears the way for the rest of the day. Yes, I know. You know, it's funny you mentioned the getting messages from all over the place. And I was just sitting here thinking, you know, there's a couple of those places I should probably put up an automated something that says, I'm not going to force you here, but if you want to get in touch with me a little faster, try this <laughs> channel instead. <laughs> but uh, one that vexes me, maybe you have a tip, and I, I, I think I know what the answer is, I just don't like it, but I get messages on, you know, basically on Facebook messaging messages from the Unstarving Musician Facebook page. And those tend to get buried, uh, both on my, my mobile. They don't, I don't get alerted right away. And they're a bit of a, you know, there are a few more clicks to get to. And then on desktop, they're totally buried. And I, I don't see that little red thing with numbers on it in my, in my browser very easily. 
those really get hidden from me. Yeah, you know, the occasional something on LinkedIn or like sometimes the same people messaging me in multiple places and I've been guilty of that. And I'm like, don't do that. I gotta like, I have to associate you with one channel. So if I ever need to get in touch with you, I know you'll respond this way fastest. <laughs> so. Well, even my contact page was saying that at some point, right? Like, don't message me, don't email me, don't uh, go on the social media <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> platforms, great. just contact support. You know, that's where I send people. Unfortunately, you know, my support team is empowered to answer certain types of requests, which are the majority, but they have no idea how to respond to personal things. So at the end of the day, they're just going to send me a notice saying, hey, uh, David, could you answer this question <laughs> for us <laughs> anyway? So yeah, I, I'm, I'm changing things up a little bit. At, at some point, I'm going to have an assistant handling all these messages and emails because I think that's the only way to continue to scale at some point it's going to become unmanageable just like with uh, Jonathan Colton who eventually had to have an assistant handle all these messages that were coming through for his cult following but with social media there is one recommendation I can make and it's not necessarily the most kind-hearted recommendation but you can turn off direct messaging on Facebook and LinkedIn and anywhere else. So if that's your preference, because I've turned it off for some of my pages, simply because people might find me under different pages on Facebook, I'd rather have that, uh, again, as much as possible, single channel communication, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to respond. Like these days, like I said, I've, I have a certain amount of time my schedule set aside for it. So as best to my ability, I will respond. That's actually a good reminder. And one that hadn't occurred to me yet is like, yeah, maybe there's one or two I could turn off. But, uh, yeah, you know, there's part of me is like, ah, I should leave that open, you know. But, and for the record, I'll never talk to Dan because do people still <laughs> use fax machines or faxes? I mean, I know there's a, like, you know, a browser based ones, but, and Dan's probably very happy if he ever hears this or cares that he'll never talk to him or I'll never reach out to him. <laughs> He's he's very wealthy, yeah, and and I'm like I don't know. I, it was at last count, it was probably several hundred thousand dollars just for one copywriting ad piece from Dan. So I'm sure I'm sure he's doing just fine. Yeah, without ever talking to me. <laughs> but that was sort of the uh, let's say the the psychology behind the whole thing was like, okay, if people want to contact me, they have to be intentional in what they're going to say. Yeah, exactly. So to send a fax, not only do they have to. I mean, in most cases, you can type it too, but you'd have to handwrite a note and then you would have to bring it somewhere like a UPS store or whatever and have them manually send this. And, and you would have to have your number ready and you'd have to drive out there. And, and you know that was part of the whole process with Dan was like, you have to think through your message before you send it. So kids, if you want to fuck with Dan, just sign up for one of these browser-based fax services where you don't have to leave the house. You're just going to pay 10 bucks a month and you can fax him to your heart's delight. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> and his numbers are in the back of his book. So oh my God. No, it's great. That's great. Actually, I, <laughs> that's great that he you know, does that and he's got so much going on. Um, can you talk a little bit about the personal development program? I know that there are many musicians who are trying to be very business minded about this or just like, I don't know, trying to get out of their own way or get out of their own head who would love to know more about what that has done for you. And if there's any specifics about the type or the program, you're doing anything you can share about it. What a wonderful question. Yeah, I guess I'll just be upfront. You can learn more about the types of programs I've been taking in the last couple of years at landmarkworldwide.com. Yeah, so Landmark is the one offering these programs. I initially took the Landmark Forum, and then they have what's called the Curriculum for Living, and it's comprised of three courses, and I completed that this year. So the first one is the forum. The second one is the advanced course. The third one is the self-expression and leadership program. And the self-expression leadership program lasts for four months. So compared to these weekend courses that you can take, which truly are transformational, as that is their promise, and they are right, <laughs> they will make a difference in your life. Uh, despite all the criticisms that you can read online. No, this is not a cult. And uh, if you don't know what the definition of a cult is, it's basically a group of get together of people with a charismatic leader who wants to cause mass suicide and separate you from your family. God, I was hoping you were going to throw someone under the bus with that. If you want to know what cult is, look up <laughs> these guys now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> but that's that's the definition of a cult. There's a charismatic leader that wants to separate you from your family and ultimately cause mass suicide. It's not a network marketing company. So there is no referral rates. There's no affiliate program. There's no MLM, which is disappointing to some people and uh, a big relief for, for many, many, many others. And so the self-expression leadership program, which so I took completed earlier this year, that one and you, I do believe the first two courses are prerequisite to getting there. But uh, that one requires that you start a community project. And then you discover how you do life through that project. Because it's your job now to have people involved in your project and to have people observe your project. In other words, you ask very specific questions about how they think you're doing. You're going to be interviewing your friends and your family members and your people to get a sense of how they're listening to you. In other words, how they think about you and uh, lots of stuff to get you out of your little comfort zone. So <laughs> yeah, but it's great. And uh, it's not information learning where most courses, classes that you can take are focused on giving you information, which can be helpful, but it, you know, some of it sticks with you, some of it doesn't. You take home what you take home, you apply what you apply, and that's it. Where this is transformative learning, so whatever you get out of it, whatever you now see, you, you can't unsee it. And transformative learning, I've really gotten to see the impact of and the possibilities of what that can create for people in the last, in the last year or so. Very cool. I've never taken one of their courses. I have always heard good things about them, limited exposure. I did wonder if they were kind of like an MLM model because of a personal exposure with it many years back. And oddly enough, I met a guy, a couple actually, here in Panama, the husband of which worked for the company, Landmark Education, I guess the name of it, or Landmark something. He, I don't know that he was ever an educator, although as an employee, you, you um, get exposure to many, if not all of their programs. And uh, he really enjoyed it for what that's worth. And he's a great guy. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I mean, that was my first knee jerk response too, is to go and see if this thing was, was an MLM, which like, I don't have an aversion to, I've been part of a couple of network marketing companies in the past, but, uh, yeah, it was the first thing that I looked up to see, see if that's what I was getting myself into. And because if I was, I probably wasn't going to join. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm a big fan of Robert Kiyosaki's early books. And uh, he was maybe the first or one of the first people I knew of who mentioned Landmark Education or Landmark Worldwide. And and he had good things to say about it. And I'm like, all right, street cred, enough for me, you know. <laughs> It's all based on the teachings of Werner Earhart. So if you're curious, you know, you could go on YouTube and, and listen to a bunch of his speeches and and get a sense of who he is and what he discovered. It's pretty, pretty amazing stuff if, if you listen with an open mind. I will check that out. David, thanks again for making time for me. It is, I feel lucky to have gotten to do this uh, more than once now. And it's been a pleasure both times and hopefully we'll we'll do it again sometime soon. Sounds great. I, I really relish in every opportunity to do this. So thank you for your generosity, Robonzo, in, in offering this to your listeners and creating something that, that can inspire and motivate and help them with any aspect of, of their career. Yeah, you got it, man. And for those of you listening, check out all of David's work at musicentrepreneurhq.com and uh, you'll find out all the different places that he and they are on socials and all the cool work we talked about today and um, a lot of other stuff we didn't talk about today. So we'll talk again soon, my friend. Absolutely. Have yourself a great day. You too. Hey, thanks again for listening. If you are loving the podcast, please visit unstarvingmusician.com forward slash crowd sponsor to learn about the various ways that you can offer your support. And again, if you're a listener, I consider you a supporter, especially if you shared it with a friend. Thank you. Have you heard of Banzoogle? Yep, they're powering websites for musicians all over the world. Their easy system will get you online fast. They have tons of mobile-friendly templates to help you custom and design your site and content. It's built for musicians by musicians. They make it easy to sell merch, grow your email list, integrate your socials, and they offer support from a musician-friendly team seven days a week. Plans are affordable. Go to bandzoogle.com to start a free trial, and be sure to use the promo code Robonzo to get 15% off your first year. That's bandzoogle.com, promo code Robonzo, R-O-B-O-N-Z-O. 
Look for show notes and links to most everything mentioned in this episode at unstarvingmusician.com forward slash podcast. Thanks so much for listening. With a whole lot of gratitude, peace, love, and more cowbell.